Hello, my Astro family. This is Lada from astrolada.com, and today I'm here with our fantastic teacher, Victor, who is going to talk to us about uh, solar arcs. Hi, Victor. Hi, hi, Lada. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And solar arcs, I remember when I first heard about solar arcs uh, years ago. And uh, I was just learning astrology and my teacher said, wait till we learn solar arcs. They're the most precise predictive tool ever. It will blow your mind off. I remember so clearly what he said and I was so fascinated. Can you tell us a little bit more about solar arcs, what they represent? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, what a shame that plenty of people don't use solar arc. However, this is one of the easiest timing technique and uh, one of the most precise one as well at the same time. So, so I really encourage everyone to look at their solar arc. Yes, it's not gonna be about daily activities and it's not gonna be about, you know, what is gonna be happening maybe next month. This is more about major life events, what it's gonna be showing us in our chart. But basically solar arc is um, um, a symbolic timing technique. And the simplicity of solar arc is coming from the fact that every single planet is going to be moving one degree ahead, approximately one degree ahead a year. Now, um, how much it moves ahead depends on the speed of the sun. Uh, the sun is a little bit uh, slower between uh, uh, May to August, and then it's a lot faster uh, between November to February. Well, the lot faster means that sun moves approximately about 0.59 degree a day. And uh, when it's fastest, then it's moving 101. And when it's quite slow, then it only moves 0.57. So therefore, uh, basically what solar arc is about, that if you are um, 30 years old, and let's say you had mercury on five degree of cancer, then uh, 30 years later, your mercury is going to be on five degree of Leo. So everyone is going to be moving one degree ahead. And that's one of the major difference, for instance, from progression, because in progression, we take into account the retrograde, the direct, the stationary uh, positions and so forth. Here, every single body of the chart is gonna move one degree ahead in the chart. Um, and, you know, I would say that uh, transit is something to do with, with the cycles, so it's going to be talking about the real time of uh, the events of the sky. Um, progression is something to do with the soul evolutionary process. And I would say that the solar arc is something which is kind of combining the two together. So in my opinion, progression is more about internal feelings, which might be sometimes representing or manifesting in outer events but solar arc is definitely talking about outer events in our chart mm -hmm. they're very um, specific events yeah yeah and you know when you use solar arc um it's very important that you're going to be using a very tight orb because as i said one degree represents one year mm -hmm. so i tend to be giving only half a degree orb which already represents six months so basically uh five minutes is going to be one month, uh, 30 minutes is about six months, and the degree is approximately about a year. So um, basically that's the, um, um, very shortly what solar arc is about. Now, um, I would say that, you know, when you work with solar arc, you always need to consider when a planet is changing the sign. Oh, so so it's like in progressions? Like in yes, exactly, just like in progressions, and a couple of pivotal points of the chart is always going to be the zero degree and the 29 degree. Um, so once it's leaving the sign, the 29 degree is always going to be about what have you learned about that sign. If you didn't learn much, usually that's a crisis year, especially if it's on Scorpio, for instance, the double whammy, double crisis situation. And the zero degree is going to be talking about some pure new energy. But I'm going to be uh, speaking about that um, in the webinar a lot more in depth. Another, re another thing which you want to be looking at when a solar arc planet is going to be making an aspect to the angles 
or to any of your uh, natal planets. And especially you want to be focusing on conjunction, squares, and opposition. Now, you might be asking why only the square family we look at, because those tend to be the event triggering aspects. Sextile and trine, yes, they might be bringing something for you, but um, you, you might take it naturally and you don't make an action on it. Conjunction, square, and opposition tends to be more like a bum kicking type of energy. So those tend to be bringing something exciting um, in our life. And also, another thing which you should be considering, if you use Placidus or Quadrant House System or whatever house system you use, when the uh, solar arc planet is crossing a house. So for instance, you've got your second house on 23 degree of Aries, then uh, whenever a planet is within about half a degree, the solar arc planet is half a degree from your second house cusp, that could be triggering something uh, in your financial department, for instance. Mm -hmm. So solar what, arc is- What house system should we use for solar arcs? Because we use um, sign, but if we're using the cusps, would you prefer Placidus or? You know, um, I just recently made a video about uh, this because I think the best way is when you combine the two of them. So <clears throat> I'll give you an example. For instance, I have got a stellium in the 10th house. Mm -hmm. In uh, Placidus, it's going to be in the 9th house. Now, in my opinion, the difference between them two is, well, um, um, disregarding the, um, you know, the technical part of it, uh, the whole sign house system is more about the roots and the resources you bring into this incarnation. Placidus is going to be something which is allowing it, you to, uh, to manifest it. So, for instance, uh, the root I'm bringing with the temp house energy is something to, like leadership qualities. Mm -hmm. And how can I do that? Maybe the Placidus house system will show that, which is ninth house energy. So, for instance, through teaching, travels, spiritual practices, and so forth. I think there is no, you know, it's not about which house system is better. I feel like it's going to be more about uh, trying to blend the two energies and that's when you get the most accurate reading and one more more one more note on the Placidus house system I feel like plenty of people actually don't use it right because even if you've got planets in your ninth house but that's the tenth sign from the uh, rising sign you still need to combine the two energies because everything starts with the rising sign itself and people forget to to do that and um, i think that helps uh, your interpretation once you blend the two of them by the way uh, to answer your question which one would you which one i would use um you know if you use placidus house system your chart needs to be super accurate because the rising sign and the house cusp move one degree every two to six minutes yeah. So a two degree difference can already indicate a year of a miscalculation of any event. Mm -hmm. Meaning I might, you know, tell you, for instance, that, oh, you know, you're going to have um, a second house activation by solar arc in 2022. But if your timing of birth is not accurate, uh, it might be just a couple of years later or three mm -hmm. years later, depending mm -hmm. on the discrepancy of your date of birth, I mean the timing of birth. So, and that's one of the reasons why I rely a lot on uh, oil sign house system because I think 80% of uh, people don't have the right timing of birth. And therefore it is extremely important to rectify the chart, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, just a couple of words about, um, uh, you know, what happens for instance when you're Solar arc, when your midheaven is getting activated, for instance, uh, by a solar arc planet. Obviously, a planet is bringing its quality to, for instance, your midheaven. So, firstly, you're always going to have to look at what is that planet, um, what is the natal promise of that planet. So, I'll give you an example. Let's imagine that 
you've got Venus, which is going to be, or Neptune, which is going to be hitting your um, midheaven by solar arc. And Neptune has got, for instance, a square with Venus. So obviously, the person is going to be having a Neptunian Venusian conflict. So Neptune is never going to be, you know, um, the idealistic, or I mean, it depends what powers it triggers, but Neptune is never going to carry its pure energy onto the midheaven because there is going to be a little bit of a, a Venusian energy triggered there as well because it's like the whole square is moving forward as well. So it's never going to disappear from the chart. Uh, does that make sense, what I'm trying to say? Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, so, or for instance, imagine that you've got a Jupiter and Venus trine, and Jupiter is going to be hitting your uh, midheaven. Uh, you still, not, yeah, the midheaven by solar arc, you still going to have somehow a Jupiter and the Venusian taste to your midheaven, and maybe that Jupiter is going to be about abundance and opportunities and um, um, uh, new doors are opening up, up for you. Or imagine that Pluto is going to be going on to your uh, midheaven. Well, midheaven is always going to be talking about vocational changes, uh, social status changes, and uh, with Pluto probably uh, in a Plutonian way we're going to have to recognize our life mission and our callings. And of course, if we don't want to do that, because let's say Pluto is going to be in the sign of Taurus or Scorpio, which is a very stubborn sign, then uh, basically it would be indication that uh, Pluto is going to be forceful and it might bring you power struggles and, you know, uh, crisis situations into your life to awaken you to recognize that call in your life or that you have to make some uh, vocational changes. Or imagine that you have got your um, solar arc sun, which is going to be hitting your rising sign. So the solar arc sun is always going to be about this core self changes, that you're going to have to align your self image and values and intentions with uh, what we have actually become in the present moment. So making kind of a piece of uh, who we are. And, and with the solar arc sun, it's always going to be a fresh engagement in life, building on confidence and vitality and energy level and so forth. And because it's happening on your rising sign, which is all about how you approach life, um, how you negotiate with others, uh, what type of mask you wear. So maybe that's going to be the time of, um, you know, a time when you realize that I don't need to be wearing a mask anymore. But you're going to have to take into uh, consideration, for instance, your sign as well on the rising sign, of course, because that's going to be the ways how you do that. So the sign is always about uh, how we do things. Mm -hmm. The house position is the area of life. And the planet is just kind of a motivating factor. Mm -hmm. Each planet, I would say, has got four levels. You know, we've got the evolutionary... Um, the evolutionary meaning of the planet, so how the soul would progress. It has got the positive meaning, it has got the negative meaning. So it absolutely depends on you whether you recognize that energy or not. Or when, last example, if you have got, let's say, solar arc moon uh, going through, um, um, let's say, your Venus, for instance, in the chart. Firstly, you want to see what does that Venus rule in your natal chart. And where is Venus located? So let's suppose that Venus is located in the fifth house, which is all about romance, love, taking risks in life, speculative businesses, children, and, um, and maybe Venus rules your seventh house and it rules your second house, for instance. So the, the, that moon, which is going to be talking about a shift in emotional needs, or you are listening more to your intuitive heart, or you want to be healing, so some type of self-healing. So Moon is bringing its self-healing uh, energy onto either seventh house matters, second house matters, or fifth house matters. 
Of course, um, we're going to have to look at uh, a little bit more in depth. Usually there are more solar arms getting activated and it's going to help you to narrow down which area of life you mostly, for instance, uh, your emotional needs are going to be shifting. So I'll give you an example. For instance, um, recently uh, I had a solar arc Pluto um, hitting my Jupiter, which I saw last year. So, and I saw it's going to be getting activated in August. So Pluto and Jupiter is a millionaire combination. So I was like, I'm going to go to the lottery and I'm going to, you know, play and stuff like that. Jupiter, by the way, rules my 10th house and the first house. So um, um, lottery belongs to the 11th, but anyway, I was still hopeful because uh, natally I've got Pluto in the 8th house, which is all about other people's money. So what eventually Pluto brought me was uh, uh, a weight loss because Jupiter rules my first house. So somehow Pluto okay. brought me uh, a kind of a a crisis situation and unfortunately it was harder and harder to walk for instance and my breathing had some problems anyway so I decided to lose weight um, and um, and then obviously there is always an underlying uh, condition of each of the planets and Pluto does tend to bring some crises and so forth so it turned out that I've got diabetes and all these type of things so Pluto brought a complete transformation to my body and to, to the way I approach life now. Wow. Well, I didn't become a millionaire, but um, kind of I saved myself and I saved my body. Wow. So, great. Yeah. So great. <laughs> you know, um, but I've got an example, actually, which um, uh, I thought I would show you guys today. I'm going to share the screen. Um, so, for instance, um, this is a Madonna's chart, Madonna. and um, and um, this is the solar arc when her very first single um, basically was released. Now, I would like to mention that, um, for instance, if someone swarms in, for instance, into a, you know, to be a leader of a country, for instance, and so forth, basically that's kind of like a new um chart of the country and um and whatever goes on with solar arc that's how the presidency is going to be for that person so this is very similar for instance with singers as well or with your life as well so let's suppose that you know for instance um madonna when she had her first single release by the way, which was in 1982, 6th of September, you can see that her solar arc Venus was right on her sun. So this is where you can see the solar arc uh, planetary positions. And you can see that the Venus was on 2347. And you can see that the sun is on 23 degrees as well. Mm -hmm. So as I said, we're gonna be giving a half a degree orb on each side. And if we look at what um, Venus or what Sun rules here, first of all, Sun rules uh, 12th house. Mm -hmm. Now in ancient astrology, 12th house is so much to do with uh, profession. And the reason being is because this is one of the houses which is sextile in usually the mid heaven. So any planet there actually could be, especially when it's strong, it could be talking about um, uh, a professional field you can be, you know, pursuing. And um, Venus, which is uh, ruling her ninth house and her second house, that gets into the spotlight. Now, a ninth house is something to do with uh, international matters, publishing, and the second house is her financials. Mm -hmm. On top of that, this Venus is sextile in her north node as well. So she is stepping onto her path. Whenever a north node gets activated in the chart, it's always going to be talking about that you are called for your life mission. And, uh, and she is doing that in a Venusian way. And what's Venus? It's all about creativity, 
uh, pleasure, enjoyment, vocal cords. And where does she do that? In Leo fields, which, which is stage, performance, self-expression. So it's beautifully showing actually uh, what was going on, for instance, on that day. And this is determining kind of how successful she is also going to be. On top of that, uh, by the way, I'm going to cheat here, but plenty of notes. I'm preparing the slides for the Oh, that, uh, that's what, the, by the way, Victor is doing a webinar on solar arcs. It will be this Saturday? Uh, it's going to be on the um, Sunday at 5 p.m. Hungary, Budapest. Sunday, the 7th of March. Of course, if you can't catch it live, the recording, you own it for life. You can watch it after that and learn. So I made, uh, because I've already done some um, examples for you guys for the webinar, she also had solar art Uranus conjunct in Mercury. So right there, what does Mercury rule in her chart? It rules the 10th house, which is her career. And um, Uranus brings sudden changes. Yeah. And she did that in a Virgo way. And Virgo is all about service to others. So that beautifully shows, and also at the same time, she had Neptune sextiling her part of fortune. Uh, and Neptune is the planet of fame, music industry, creativity. And also she did that uh, quite in a scorpionic way. <clears throat> she really became famous by using her body, her sexuality, um, her charisma, Mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, yeah, so this is, for instance, an example uh, of how to go about solar arc. Now, um, in the webinar, by the way, I'm going to take it uh, a lot further, because um, I feel like, um, I mean, what I plan to do is, we're going to speak about what is solar arc to start with, how to interpret solar arc. We're going to go through uh, a little bit the meaning of squares, oppositions, conjunctions. Here, I really recommend using minor aspects as well, such as in conjunctions, semi-square and sesquisquares. So we're gonna go through those. Uh, it's also very important to use midpoint. So we're gonna touch base on midpoint as well. <clears throat> and uh, if you need, I will be able to send over your midpoint charts your midpoint tree, so that it's a little bit easier to look at your chart. You're just going to have to drop me an email and then I can do that. And also, we're going to look at a uh, term and bound as well. Oh, actually, let me share the screen again, because um, I wanted to show you something on so that. Term and bound, like directing the ascendance or the planets through the different terms and bound? No, we're going to be using the, yes. So we're going to be looking at the Egyptian terms. So by the way, if you don't know how to pull up solar art, just enter your data on uh, us.com, then scroll down in the chart type, and then uh, natal and solar art direction, you should be clicking on. And then I also recommend clicking on um, the Egyptian term. Yeah. Right there. Because... Um, um, you can see that each of the sign are broken into little segments. Um, they are uh, mathematically calculated, quite complicated. I'm not going to go into that. I wouldn't even be able to explain mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, it was done with, um, anyway, doesn't matter. So each of your planets are going to be in a particular territory. So for instance, uh, Mars is in a Jupiterian territory. So that's actually, even though this Mars is in detriment, mm -hmm. uh, it's on a Jupiterian territory, which is a benefit planet. Mm -hmm. So that gives a little bit of a power to that Mars. Uh, it's a lot better when, for instance, it's in a Saturnian territory. Now, why is it important for us? Because each year, as I said, each planet is going to be going one degree ahead. So in case of Madonna, for instance, when she was about seven years old, the sun changed sign. And um, 
these are significant because uh, the modality of the planet, the uh, polarity of the planet, the elements of the planet are changing. So basically, it's like you were Leo and then all of a sudden you became a Virgo character. And you can see that the sun, firstly, is going to be in a Mercurian territory. And uh, we're going to have to look at whether the sun and Mercury are going to be able to get along with each other or not. And when the sun gets, for instance, onto seven degree on top of my head, on seven degree, then it's going to be joining a Venusian territory. Mm -hmm. So that Venus rules her second house and ninth house, for instance. So it has got a little bit of a different meaning, and that could make solar art. Uh, extremely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning, and it's it's just fascinating. So you're using it how the ancients actually they were using primary directions, but you're using it with uh, the symbolic directions of the solar arc because they'll use primary directions to see where a planet moves through the terms and what the energy of the next few years will be like, basically. Exactly. Just, um, yeah, I know which one you are mentioning, but I'm not going to go into that uh, in the webinar because this is already quite a huge topic to cover. Um, but definitely it doesn't mean, the reason why we have to look at that because some of you might uh, be wondering, okay, so my son is in the, in the sign of Virgo, so my 30 year is going to be all about uh, first house methods and not necessarily. So maybe the first five or seven years uh, when the sun moved into the sign of Virgo, it was about first house matters and maybe it was about 10th house matters. So maybe something to do with the mom when she became between the age of seven and 14, right? When it goes into Venusian territory, maybe it's something to do with self-worth or international matters. Mm -hmm. Maybe she was moving <clears throat> and so forth. So not the entire 30 years is going to be about just the self. Of course, that's going to be the major topic, but it's going to get colored by different experiences. So the self-expression, for instance, through relocation, and maybe I feel more free, for instance, and so forth. Mm -hmm. It really depends on some of the aspects. Mm. Yes, yeah. so we're going to touch base on that as well. Uh, by the way, I, the reason why I love using turn because, um, um, which doesn't really belong here, but turn is something which is given description about uh, how someone looks like. So, for instance, uh, let's suppose that her seventh house ruler is Jupiter. Uh, I might just bring that up here and it's easier to see. So, Madonna. So, so seven house starts on uh, Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter. So if I go on the Jupiterian line, there is a Mars on the turn position. Mm -hmm. So that is Mars gonna be describing her future marriage partner. And if you wanna be even more precise, you're gonna be looking at where Mars is. And Mars is in the sign of Taurus. So Taurus is a little bit maybe stocky or wide shoulder, a quite muscly and so forth. So it's just a quick tip why um, Asian people use the term so much because it was given description of people as well. Same with, for instance, um, you know, the rising sign. And this is the easy way how you can check that. So for instance, her rising sign ruler is Mercury. Her rising sign ruler. So Mercury is actually is the term position here as well for her physical look. Now, uh, Mercury is um, in the sign of Virgo. So uh, she might have got some Virgo look. Virgo is usually skinny, smaller, uh, yeah. taller, kind of lean body. Um, yeah, and, and so forth. She's tiny. I, I see her like. in real life. She, she's a pocket. <laughs> she can yeah. see a pocket. Yeah. Yeah, so just an interesting fact about the term position if someone wants to check out theirs. But of course, you're going to have to combine that look with the ruler of your rising sign as well, and then you get a perfect picture about someone's appearance. 
and and Merc and and Mercury is in a Mercury term, so very youthful. She looks exactly. Youthful. Plus that Mercury um, has got planetary joy. Uh, Mercury has got the most strength in the first house. The reason being is because Mercury is the planet of breathing, breath. And when you are born, basically you take your first breath. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Mercury lies being in the first house. Yeah. So she's got a super good Mercury, which is the ruler of her first house and 10th house. So that does indicate a super good um, a super good uh, um, career, basically. No wonder why when Uranus hit on it by Solar Arc, she became so famous. Yeah. You can look at that her Mercury has got 11 points. That's extremely high. Yes. So that's accidental, essential dignity, strength. And look at how strong is her son. Has got strength by rulership and triplicity as well. And Venus hit it. Um, so she had that fantastic breakthrough, basically, uh, in her career, and then it's been going since. Wonderful. Wow, thank you so yes. I, I, I've watched solar arcs mostly when they pass angles, because then I feel it so strongly, and I had four planets pass my uh, uh, IC, the four house cusp. Every time they did, I moved, and now my uh, yeah. husband... This year in the summer is having Uranus passing exactly through his IC and we're moving to Bulgaria. <laughs> so. Nice. You know, the reason why um, um, I think it's good to be looking at these because as I said, Uranus can bring uh, unpleasant surprises as well, but we are ready for it. It's our choice to, to decide how I want to use that Uranus. You've got free will. Yeah. Um, and I, I always find it important to emphasize that. Yeah. Use the, you know, in your case, use that Uranus for having brilliant ideas, decide that I'm going to Bulgaria to, you know, to um, have some type of fun and becoming a genius and working with astrology and all those type of things. Because then Uranus doesn't care about, you know, it, it is manifested in one way or another. So it's not going to bring negative things. That's how I look at astrology. That's how I kind of try to live my life by the help of astrology. Well, his Uranus has perfect trine to Venus, which means that when Uranus passes the IC, solar arc Venus will trine the IC. Uh, and, oh. and so it's, he's going to like it there. <laughs> With our the Prutim again, but our Prutim... What does Venus the, rule? His Venus rules his ascendant. So oh, okay, so he's ascendant. Uh huh. Yeah, he's gonna enjoy it absolutely. <laughs> I feel like um, uh, maybe um, he's gonna enjoy it too much, you know. <laughs> so at the end of the day, uh, Venus is all about pleasure and entertainment. If you guys go in in summer, you know there is gonna be plenty of yeah, beach time, <laughs> fun and beach and so forth. So oh, I think babies, have an amazing babies. time. Stay with the parent, with the grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll come hang out with you. <laughs> and Venus rules your um, fifth, no? No, oh, no, that's his chart, not mine. Oh, that's his chart, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's what we're going to be speaking about um, in the uh, webinar. I'm also going to be showing you on the webinar how to blend solar arc with transit. I wanted to mention this uh, because it's very important. Something needs to trigger the solar arc for the events to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what transit is extremely good for. Uh, and I personally use the lunar cycles. So the progressed moon, when the progressed moon also triggers a solar arc event, that's when things uh, usually manifest. So um, I'm gonna show you how to combine those as well. So. Um, so hopefully you will feel comfortable going home and then having a look at your own uh, chart. And lastly, we're going to be speaking about zero and 29 degree and the importance of those. Sorry, about what? The zero and the 29 degree, why they are important both natally and by solar arc as well. Well, I just have Mars at zero degree Gemini right now, solar arc. By solar arc. Yeah. <laughs> so basically um, what happens is that 
uh, a 29 degree is very much about uh, closing a chapter in our life. Mm -hmm. And whenever a planet hits, let's say 29 degree or zero degree, in your case zero degree, it automatically to, uh, communicate with every single planet in that house. It's like giving an order. This is what I want to learn in this sign. Mm -hmm. so for instance, let's suppose that you've got, uh, do you have any planet in there? No. No, so, but let's suppose you had, for instance, uh, Saturn. So um, Mars is automatically gonna be experiencing Saturn, for instance, in the fourth house. And that's how it's gonna kind of learn. And that's the evolutionary process of the Marsian topics in your life. So let's say Mars, for instance, rules your third house on top of my head. Third and tenth, yeah. Yeah, third and tenth house. So basically that's a new beginning of your career. And you're gonna have to do that through Gemini ways because it's going into Gemini, right? Yeah. So Gemini is all about learning, taking on additional courses, teaching additional courses. I'm just starting teaching. More. <laughs> yeah. Yes, technology, uh, building on the social media channel and so forth. So you are doing basically a new beginning, a new chapter in your mm -hmm. entire career. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm preparing, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'll give you an example of uh, Whitney Houston, when she was um, 17 years old, then her solar arc Neptune went into her 10th house in Sagittarius. Um, and that's when she started to become a model and she started taking drugs as well, unfortunately, oh. at the same time. Uh, and 30 years later, exactly when Neptune was on her on the 29 degree in her 10th house, her career finished. Her career finished because she died. Yeah. And that was exactly 2959 on the 12th of February wow. 2012. I don't I don't don't assume that 29 degree means we're gonna die. Nothing like that. But it shows a, 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 an end of an era. Yeah. And because it was in her 10th house, it was end of her career basically. Uh, but it's always, you know, uh, just the last um, advice. So, you know, in order for you to know what is ending, you're going to have to look at what happened at the beginning. Mm. So in case of Whitney, when Neptune went on to zero degree, what happened? She started her uh, career. So obviously when that Neptune gets to the end of the sign, uh, her career is going to finish. So, um, you know, if you have got planets nowadays around, you know, the endings, just have a look at what happened with you or with your family when it started the zero degree. So you're gonna feel back 30 years. So there's something magical about this 30 year period. That... Uh, the magicality behind is that um, uh, if someone looks at their solar return chart, you will see that either at the age of 29 or 33, uh, the solar return rising sign is exactly the same like your natal rising sign, either age 29 or 33, one of those two. It depends whether you were born between May and August or from November till February. Uh, age 29, 30 is your Saturn return. Age 29-ish, when you have got your um, your uh, progress moon progress. return. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, um, obviously, by solar arc planets are changing sign as well, uh, approximately every 30 years. So yes, 30 is a magical number. Yeah. And that's why some astrologers believe that the semi-sextile should be considered as a major aspect. Because mm. it's 30 but, degrees. Yeah, but anyway, we went far off the topic, yes, but sorry, it's, it's interesting to mention. It's fascinating talking to you. You're like an encyclopedia of, uh, of knowledge. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. Looking forward to the class. If anyone would like to take this, uh, it's one-time class with Victor, whether live or watch or on the recording, check out the link below. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank you everyone for joining us today and then I hope to see you on the webinar.
Thank you so much, Victor. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs> and everyone, you too. Bye-bye. Take care.